TGF beaters. They are the, the growth factors that make the changes. Now, in ordinary circumstances, when you cut yourself, we have a look at the TGF beaters, and what we find is that the TGF beta 3 lasts for a long time, at least a short time, whereas the TGF beta 1 and 2 last for a long time. So that's what happens when you injure yourself, when you, you have a scar. Then I thought, well, if we understand that, that with needling we've got the opposite situation, uh, that the TGF beta 1 and 2 disappear in 24 hours and the TGF beta 3 stays longer, then we should get an idea of how often should we needle. Because this is the picture. There's the TGF beta 1, beta 2, and here's the TGF beta 3. It's lasting almost two weeks. And so if I needle at two week intervals, this is the picture that I'm getting. I'm getting that rise in TGF beta. I'm getting that rise in TGF beta. And if say this is a month, a year, six months, whatever, I'm only getting the effect of that. So we, in conjunction with Stellenbosch University, we decided to see if we could uh, use a non-invasive technique to, to map out what was happening to the TGF beaters when we needled. And so we've uh, demonstrated that uh, the TGF beta 3 rises and then rises again. And this is paralleling what they found in Germany. And you can see, so the first treatment gives me the TGF beta 3 up to there. The second treatment, the TGF beta 1 and 2, come in for a momentary uh, time, but the TGF beta 3 is there. So now I've got that amount of TGF beta 3 into the tissues. And if it's dose related, then I'm in a better situation. And if I do it the third week, again, now uh, the TGF beta 1 and 2 dis uh, appear and disappear and we're going higher. Because, and it's not, it, it's, it's flattening out. Because this one's flattening out, this one's flattening out. So that's why it doesn't uh, go very high. So then I thought, well, you know, that's the picture with the once every seven days. We're getting nice results, but can't we get better <laughs> results than that? And I also started to look at this. Is, if this is the concentration of the TGF beta 3, by the um, sixth week, we've got a massive dose of TGF uh, beta 3. So that's why we could get a result like that in that person. But now I'm going further because what I'm doing is every second or third day and I'm getting brilliant results in myself. I've tightened up my facial skin, my neck skin because of doing this and this is what's happening and we're going to be doing a study to see if this is indeed true but now you can see by doing it as every one of these are second day by doing it at second day intervals, we're climbing higher. We've already reached the maximum by the third treatment uh, that, uh, compared to what we would have achieved if we had uh, done it um, once a week. And so we get to much higher levels of TGF beta 3. And that's what's exciting me because I think that's why we uh, get better results. However, it's not something that the average person may do uh, because uh, it doesn't fit in with their work, whereas the once a week fits in better. But on the other hand, there are people who take holidays and decide that they want to, you know, they have facelifts and things like that. So what happens after if a client waits two weeks, there is that full 